subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on our updates and get notified about our new videos. So first of all, I would like to welcome you to the session and thank you all for joining because it's like a Saturday afternoon and everyone must be like having plans. So thank you everyone for joining. We'll be talking about the significance and career prospects of artificial intelligence in India in this session. Before we start, let me give a brief introduction about myself. Let me give a brief introduction of myself. I'm Arish Ali. I started my career as a data scientist at Mu Sigma. After that, I moved into another artificial intelligence company called BMO, which is the mental health startup, which uses artificial intelligence in the form of chatbots to provide therapy. Right now, I have my own startup, which is in something called as people analytics or uh, in a more uh, popular term, HR analytics. So it kind of analyzes uh, employee data and tells you what is the potential of some employee churning? What is the potential of not churning? How is the culture or fit going to be and things like that. If you have any question, meanwhile, you can like just drop it in the chat window and I'll be keep, I'll keep on checking the chat. Yeah. So if anyone of you has any question, I can see it on this chat screen. So please free, feel free to ask at any point of time. The agenda for this is an introduction to artificial intelligence. What is the state of artificial intelligence in India? <clears throat> how, <clears throat> excuse me, how artificial intelligence is uh, transforming the different industries that we know and how they operate. And what are the career prospects in artificial intelligence in India? And what are the skills required? to be considered as a potential employee or what are the skills required to kind of make use of artificial intelligence, not just from an employee perspective, but even from a startup perspective, even from an entrepreneurship perspective. So the first thing about artificial intelligence is it is a very, very generic term and many people use artificial intelligence in different ways. So artificial intelligence could very well be a very complicated piece of software or it can be a rule based software like a if else statement. So anything is being packaged as artificial intelligence right now. So when I say artificial intelligence, it will mean a broad sense of things. But in our uh, discussion for today in our presentation for today, a major part of artificial intelligence will be things from uh, computer science like machine learning, deep learning and things like that. So as artificial intelligence includes things like self driving cars, robots, machine learning, uh, chatbots, Alexa, CD and things like that. A really cool thing about artificial intelligence is that it is making our life so easier that it is causing a tremendous demand from people with artificial intelligence skills and AI is expected to create 2.3 million jobs by 2020, which is a good thing. But on the downside, it will be replacing 1.8 million while it creates 2.3 million jobs. So a good way to look at it is to reskill and upskill to kind of come back to the 2.3 million job prospective market. Any questions so far? This is a slide which talks about what the general public means when they talk about artificial intelligence. What is a major portion of artificial intelligence right now? And from that, what is the uh, spearheading field in machine learning or data science or the broad term artificial intelligence that is causing so much buzz around the industry. 
So artificial intelligence is any technique which enables computers to mimic human behavior. Whereas a subset of that is a bunch of algorithms called machine learning, which is a subset of AI techniques which use statistical methods to enable machines to improve with experience. Which what this means in simple terms is, with each example, the a the machine is able to mimic a certain task. We'll get to this in more details maybe later. And deep learning being a subset of that is where uh, the research is happening nowadays. Is the place where all the buzz is around because deep learning has enabled some of the things which were not able to do in the past easily, like image recognition, like voice detection, like uh, uh, speech classification, and things like that is has become much more easier because of deep learning. Now let's talk about the state of artificial intelligence in India. If you know, uh, Vladimir Putin has said that any country leading in artificial intelligence will be the leading country in the world. So right now, the superpower are the ones who has more ammunition or arms, but later it will be the ones with more artificial intelligence capabilities. And that's why even the Indian government is catching up to the artificial intelligence need and is starting to focus on developing artificial intelligence capabilities in India. Industries have started to work to skill their manpower to enable themselves to compete with other global players. And some of the popular MNCs in India are uh, now focusing on reskilling their employee to make them move from the traditional sort of uh, coding and methodologies to more uh, new and more updated methodologies like artificial intelligence, deep neural networks and things like that. Our education system is also catching up with us though as they have all, not always, but they have been slow to catch up. So even the educational institutes are catching up to the current machine learning curriculum. If this craze or not craze, this uh, need should have been met at least four years ago, but I can see it being uh, met now at least. So back in my days, uh, there was no data science course or there was no Python or machine learning course. But now these subjects are being introduced into the curriculum. So which is a good thing. The major thing that benefited me and the major thing that benefited most of the people I know working in the field right now is trying to upskill themselves. So we are the individuals who search resources online and learned these skills and techniques on our own. And this is helping us a lot. So this is also I'm seeing a lot nowadays, many uh, individuals are reaching out for new resources and learning these skills on their own. The current focus of AI from the Indian government perspective is precision agriculture, healthcare and Indian languages projects. By precision agriculture, I mean uh, trying to predict what will be the output from a given piece of land provided my weather conditions, provided my soil condition, provided with seeds I have and be able to manage risk better. Knowing that given the certain conditions, this is my expected output. So that is one focus of the Indian government right now. Another one is healthcare. So in healthcare, uh, we have things like uh, X-ray detection or uh, diabetes detection. Uh, reading different uh, different sort of diagnosis. This in helps uh, reach out in areas which are more remote. Uh, this also helps in places by augmenting the doctors already employed in the hospital. So instead of each doctor seeing individual patients, they can screen the patients from a computer and then move on to the more complex problems. 
So the easier problems will be taken care of by the AI systems and the professionals can then focus on more complex problems which the AI system is not able to identify. Another interesting application is the Indian Languages Project. India is a culturally diverse land as well as it has many languages and most of these individuals or the next 1 billion are not able to access the internet, not able to access uh, the advances in technology because of the language barrier and AI is able to kind of uh, remove that barrier by applying techniques like converting from one language to another, identifying the sense behind a given language in a separate context of a language and things like that. Any questions so far? Uh, interesting question. So yes, AI is also actually uh, expert systems are also bucketed into artificial intelligence and expert systems was a term used somewhere in the late 90, 1980s or 1990s where these systems were uh, programmed to kind of answer questions about a certain diagnosis and then this term kind of broadened from there to apply to another systems which kind of helps us uh, answer questions and uh, know a problem better. So we can ask this expert system what our needs are and then this expert system will give us an answer. But this is also a very broad term. This could be in the form of a chatbot, this could be in the form of a, a patient diagnosis system and things like that. So yes, expert system is also a part of AI. Sure, we'll, we'll get to that towards the end of the slide. But yes, we do have that in the slide and I'll definitely let you know. The AI revolution across industries. So when, when someone asked me, what do I think about the AI revolution or is it really a revolution as such? I usually give them the uh, example of AI being the new engine. So it will do to society what the invention of engines did back in its time. So in the sense of the good as well as the bad, it will also have the similar effect on the society. Like uh, replacing jobs, but creating and automating some of the mundane jobs and affecting industries, not just in one particular area of automation, but across. So artificial intelligence is also a similar multi uh, dimensional, multi industrial technology or uh, paradigm. The emergence of artificial intelligence has played a key role in uh, the fourth industrial revolution is what is being called according to the Forbes, uh, according to the World Economic Forum. According to PwC, it is expected to contribute to 1 point, sorry, 15.7 trillion by 2030, of which China and North America will be playing a major part of it. But India also has a huge, huge potential to catch up to this. And as I was talking, it can be used to solve problems across the board, across industries, which means uh, it can help any sort of business predict and uh, forecast sales. It can help in fraud detection. It can help in uh, improve customer experience. In And this improve in customer experience is again multidimensional and in multiple ways. So it can either be through a chatbot, which helps uh, answer the queries faster than the human can, or it can be in the term of predicting what the customer needs before the customer needs it. And uh, it can also be like automating some of the customer's work. So instead of doing the customer needing to do a certain set of steps to get the job done, it can be automated. Financial industry is also one of the industries which is going to benefit a lot from the application of AI as well as the logistics companies uh, uh, for better uh, 
inventory and delivery management like i said amazon is already doing this amazon is already predicting what the customer might buy before the customer buys it so that they can have the inventory stock in stock uh, before uh, and sort of inflation in the order so yes it will be affecting many uh, areas of application like manufacturing retail transportation finance healthcare law advertisement and many other industries let's talk about the career in ai in india and uh, as we discussed medicine or healthcare is one of the areas which is of prime interest to us not just from a government perspective but even from a societal perspective which includes medical images diagnosis monitoring and control in intensive care units the design of prosthetics and design of drugs so there is this another uh, emergence of uh, field in medicine called precision uh, drugs or precision uh, healthcare which means uh, having one specific drug for all the individuals maybe we can design drugs depending on the individual's need and that's the idea behind or that's the noble idea behind precision medicine another area of uh, career in india is robotics many companies are using computer vision many computer companies are using uh, uh, linguistic com communication to name a few from the top of my head uh, haptic is one company which is using uh, chatbots to enable online ordering or uh, basically automating some of the tasks which we do manually then now uh, computer vision is being used across in many of the indian startups many of the startups based out of bangalore or hyderabad like this one company which identify the clothes in the instagram picture and then it sells you those like it provides you the link to that clothes so that is the one of the application of computer vision and uh, there are many such interesting computer vision uh, applications out there in engineering it can help uh, diagnose fault it can help in manufacturing it can help uh, in designing better so we can have designs which are generated from a artificial intelligence system hmm interesting Uh, are you recommending any tool which is having reasoning, conflict resolution, system integration with low cost? So uh, I am not recommending this tool because I believe there are very few tools with these capabilities which are having ability to reason, ability to uh, for conflict resolutions. But one such tool, if I want to look into, would be the IBM. Uh, IBM's uh, different suit of AI because they are the ones who are not just promoting AI a lot. Ah, uh, I'll have to look into that. So, I personally do not use any of these tools. These are the tools I have come across from acquaintances or from re reading online. So, I personally do not use any of these uh, reasoning tools. but from uh, from the perspective of building these tools i can recommend something like tensorflow <clears throat> or uh, something like uh, keras which are not uh, tools but they are more uh, uh, languages and libraries to use so that we can build these tools so if i were to build a system which helps the reasoning for me or uh, if i have to give a personal example so before this i was in a company which was helping patients deal with the emotional or mental health issues and over there one of my major tasks was to build a chatbot which kind of 
understands the the communicate the subtle communication like uh, if someone is asking uh, if someone is talking about something painful the chatbot has to now recognize that it is a good point in the conversation to empathize with the user so to do that we actually went about building it manually using uh, something like tensorflow so that is what more of my uh, forte and being a startup guy something like ibm would be really costly <laughs> some of the other applications of uh, ai and some of the other job opportunities in india is in the term of marketing so one of the one of the projects i was involved in in mu sigma was a marketing mix tool which is which was a predictive tool to tell what should be my optimal investment in which marketing channel to kind of get the desired return on investment from these investments like uh, if i were to invest in a print advertisement what is the expected visits to my page that i can expect from the previous by analyzing the previous years uh, previous years data so marketing is also one area where ai scientists or data scientists are being involved now talking about the skills and coming back to the question thanks thanks a lot i do that and anyways this is we are towards the end of the presentation so yeah uh, i'll be open to questions after this skills required slide so let's talk about some of the skills required in uh, artificial intelligence again so as i mentioned artificial intelligence is a much broader term and in when we talk about skills there are different set of skills for different uh, job roles so if someone is being hired under the job title as ai A developer or AI engineer, there is a very high chance that you'd be required to know machine learning as well as deep learning, and a little bit of statistics. If you are being employed as someone as an artificial intelligence researcher, then there will be a lot of more emphasis on the maths and the statistics behind the machine learning and the deep learning techniques. if you are being employed as a data science engineer or a uh, data science uh, data scientist then these are some of the skills that you would require like python r sql database uh, different visualization techniques if uh, you are being employed as a big data engineer then the skills required for that will be different but if uh, i were to say what will what are the skills required to become a artificial intelligence developer i would say something like machine learning deep learning and one of these languages and a tool like tensorflow or uh, something built on top of tensorflow like keras i hope that answers your question as well i hope uh, my previous uh, answer answered that as well but if it did not i can repeat it all right i will repeat it what are the other job different job roles opening in the space of ai so uh, ai right now is a very new field so it is actually a really good field to get into because most of the roles are not uh, so specific so something someone working on computer vision can with uh, some effort change into a natural language processing Uh, engineer or natural language processing developer so the field of ai is not exclusive right now so which is a really good thing and really a uh, nice thing to get into ai right now uh actually uh even so this question comes more from a perspective of what is the 
difference between learning and uh, what is the difference between hands on in my personal take on this is both are perfectly fine so video contents are perfectly fine hands on learning is fine what you should be looking into or what i while pitching myself as a employee i would look into or while what i be looking into while hiring someone is what what have they developed or what have what projects have they done which they care about which is really important to me uh, which separates from the projects that you do during the course of learning so instead of uh, learning and doing the only the projects that were asked for you in the course would not be enough some but going ahead and beyond and developing something which you personally care about let's say your project your course included only things like image classification or identify pictures of cats and dogs but that is not something i believe you would personally care about so what as a employee i would want to look at is uh, what have you done that you care about like have you went ahead and developed something let's say diabetes detection or let's say something like cancer detection using actual data going through the actual hard work of cleaning the data getting the data and then building the model on top of it so that's that's what is my what's my take is on it all right so uh, the one question is from a healthcare domain all right so i'll go one by one starting with this question in a healthcare domain what are the applications there for artificial intelligence so uh, i am in the field of uh, mental health care which in which uh, some of the applications and not just in mental health care but also in uh, healthcare in general is early identification of disease in uh, mental health care my objective is to have a early identification of something like depression anxiety or dyslexia uh, from a broader healthcare perspective early identification of cancer early identification of diabetes and things like that using the data and that is one application another would be assistance so uh, we are done with the uh, early diagnosis let's get to helping uh, cure it or helping prevent it so, which would be uh, in mental health space it is providing therapy through a chatbot in a healthcare space uh, it could be uh, designing the best possible uh, method to go about a certain uh, disease like best uh, what are the best medicines that i can prescribe to a person so that is one application and uh, yeah so that, those are the two major applications i can think of right now one is early identification and the second one is uh, uh, the actual care for that person okay this question what are the best websites to get opportunities on ai and ml openings apart from nokri and linkedin i personally like uh, oh this one wait i personally like uh, angel angel.com which is a site for startups and uh, right now a huge portion of the ai job market is coming from startups so uh, that is one resource i would look into all right so for speech recognition which api we can use ibl ibm watson or google api uh, which gives more accuracy is there any api which is which supports nlp in hindi so i'll go one by one uh, for speech recognition i have personally used uh, google's api which is uh, dialog dot flow and found it to be really really helpful and really good uh, so i would recommend and it is 
available on multiple platforms, whether it be Java, Node.js, Python, or Ruby on Rails. It supports most of the languages. So it is very, very developer friendly. And they have a freemium version. So you can use a huge portion of their uh, API for free for a, a relatively long time. So I personally like Dialogflow. Uh, Facebook's uh, uh, speech recognition software, I'm forgetting the name right now. Uh, but yeah, the speed, Facebook speech recognition uh, software is also relatively good. But I personally enjoy Dialogflow, which gives more accuracy. In my experience, I have only compared between uh, the free ones. So Google, Facebook's and uh, Microsoft's and I enjoyed Google's. Is there any API which supports NLP in Hindi? This is I'm not sure of, but uh, there are some startups working on this right now. So there is another startup. So if for these uh, kind of uh, applications, search for startups working on vernacular uh, uh, applications. Any online resource or do you have GitHub link for sample projects? A very good place to start is uh, the Stanford so projects. So each year Stanford has their uh, AI courses and also they provide their projects free. So you can go to the research paper and search if they have so applied the made the code available as well. So that is one place I would look into. And the tutorials on uh, TensorFlow are also good places to look for codes. You mentioned about TensorFlow. Is it the most popular or are there other that can be considered? Oh, sure. There are others that can be considered. And a good way to go about it is to just type TensorFlow. Oh, sorry. A good way to go about it is to just search Tensor, TensorFlow versus, and you get a list of all the other uh, platforms that you can consider. Keras is something built on top of TensorFlow, so I wouldn't really be like Keras versus TensorFlow, but TensorFlow adds a level of, sorry, Keras adds a level of abstraction on top of TensorFlow, so it makes building really complex systems relatively easy. So these are the two things I would look into. If your application is something lightweight, then maybe scikit-learn. I personally enjoy scikit-learn because it's really lightweight and it's very, very user friendly. So if I'm not doing something really heavy, like deep learning, deep neural networks, CNNs, then I go for scikit-learn. I, I do not consider TensorFlow in that situation. Uh, this is a really important question that I may have missed. What is the main prerequisite in terms of uh, technical? Depends on uh, depends on where you are coming from and where you're going. What that means is uh, if you're coming from a statistics background, you can very well learn and apply this. But uh, if you are open to learning, it is perfectly fine which background you're coming from, whether it be computer science, whether it be any other engineering branch or maybe some non-engineering branch as well, a more business background or a more arts background. That's perfectly fine if you're open to learning. But once so, you are done with the learning phase, some of the requirements in uh, terms of job is that you should be proficient with, with at least one language, whether it is uh, Python, whether it is R or whether it is Java, whether it is, so it is really important to be proficient in one language. And what is the importance of programming language in learning AI? This is my personal take on it. I believe that Python is relatively easy to learn when compared to other more complex languages like Java or C++. But once moving into production environment, there is a high chance you might have to convert your code from a Python code 
to a Java code. So you will be prototyping in Python and then developing the actual application in Java. And when I say Python, I also include R or other scripting languages in it, which is more easier to run, learn. Not to learn, not to learn. So you can learn a programming language along with, uh, you can learn a programming language along with your artificial intelligence and deep learning. But uh, to develop these, uh, these applications, you would, at least till now you have to learn a programming language because uh, some of the uh, GUI tools, graphic user interface tools are not up to the standards. I used a graphic user interface tool at least two or three years back and it kept on breaking and it did not support a large data set and it kept hanging. So it wasn't a good experience. So yes, at least till now a uh, programming language is really important. How would you differentiate machine learning and deep learning? I wouldn't. I wouldn't differentiate it as such. I would say, uh, I would pull back the slide. Hmm. I would pull back the slide and say, deep learning is a part of machine learning. So in machine learning, there are different algorithms like uh, linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machines and things like that. Deep learning is one such uh, is one such algorithm. So in machine learning, there's an algorithm called neural network and deep learning happens to be a more complex form of neural networks. All right. Then. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone for joining and thanks a lot for your questions. So yes, thank you and happy learning. Hey, thanks for watching. Do like the video, share it and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Check out exclusive coupon codes for our YouTube learners in the description and visit moneypalprolearn.com to redeem it.